Welcome to Land Academy. This is the Cash Flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. Jill DeWitt here for the Cash Flow from Land show. Today, we're getting to speak with Mark Ferguson. I'm going to read Mark's bio just as he wrote because I really like it like this. I have been a realtor since 2001 and I have specialized in listing REO and HUD properties since 2008. I have a team of eight that help with all aspects of the REO process and our other real estate activities. Our team strives to provide the best best service to our clients, customers, and co-op agents. We work with over 35 banks, asset management companies, and hedge funds, and we know every seller has a different process for selling their home. We take pride in mastering each process in order to sell properties as quickly as possible and with the highest net to the seller. Over the last three years, we've sold over 500 homes. I'm also an avid real estate investor. I buy and sell 10 to 15 fix and flips a year, and I own 10 long-term rentals. I'm always looking for a great deal, and I love to fix up properties. I discuss my fix and flips, rental properties, and real estate business in depth on my blog, www.invest4more.com. I have been featured on Bigger Pockets, B2R, and Zillow. And welcome, Mark. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate being on the show. You know, that's all cool, but what's really cool about you is that you live in Greeley, Colorado. That's right. I and, do. And we <laughs> live in a dusty desert and it's really beautiful up there. I've been there. No, I, I love it here. <laughs> yep. And, and actually my bio, I should update that. I'm up to 16 rental properties now. Ooh, nice. Hey, is Greeley, how far is Greeley from Estes Park? I'm trying to remember. It is about 50 miles straight east of Estes Park. You're so, not, okay. Yep. We're on the plains. Um, so you drive down the canyon. We're about 15 miles east of the, the foothills there. Um, so Got completely it. different climates, but not that far away. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so that's good. You can get to the mountains really quickly, and I'm sure you'd pro- probably do some skiing up there, I hope. Um, I, I do snowboard once in a while, but with the family and work, I don't get up there as much as I should. How the heck did you get in this crazy business, man? Um, actually, I kind of fell into it. So I graduated from the University of Colorado at Boulder and had a degree in finance. And I kind of sort of was looking for a finance job because I wanted to make a lot of money. And in my youth, I thought, hey, finance equals money. Um, but I couldn't find one that paid me enough. So I thought I'll just work part time for my father, who was a real estate agent. And that turned into full time. And lo and behold, here I am. <laughs> Well, you know, we talked to a lot of people uh, on the air and off the air, and a lot of them started in real estate by accident and just just stuck with it because they loved it. Yeah, and I grew up with it my whole life, and I always said I'm never going to be in real estate. I don't want to be have any part in it. But um, once I got into it and compared it to my other options, I'm like, I am really glad I got into real estate. Uh, so, Ralphie, right? Yes. Thank yep. you very much. Yes. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I have a good friend that went to school there, so that that's cool. I I I, I secretly cheer for the Buffaloes. <laughs> nice. So, that's yeah. good to hear. It's good. <laughs> so you have a good. You know what I love is you have a um, your background is a lot like Stephen's background, and um, one of the things I love and I think that helps make us successful is one of us can do math. And it's not Jill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, we just interviewed. No, I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying numbers and math are, I think, are super important if you're going to be investing at all. You you have to know the numbers or have someone who knows the numbers. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, I always say it's it's not so much. I don't know about your business, but it's not so much about the real estate that needs to get analyzed. It's the it's the transaction. You know, how you're financing it, how much money you're paying in, how much you think you're going to get out of it, the whole thing. It's it's more about that than the actual piece of real estate. I mean. Wallpaper can be changed out. Yes, for sure. The financing, the holding costs, 
knowing how long everything's going to take, that's probably more important than the actual property. So what do you what do you look for when you uh, I know that your bio said you you uh, flip a few houses a year or, or tw- 12 or 15 or what, what do you look for? How do you know you're going to do the deal for sure? Um, I actually have 12 flips going right now. So I have more than I've ever had at any point. And really what I look for is a house that will give me enough profit that I'm comfortable taking on the risk. And I'm not very picky about where it's at. I prefer lower priced homes because I can buy more of them and the profit margins tend to be a little higher compared to the money I have involved. But, um, you know, of course the less work involved, the better, but that's not always possible. I have found that when I get into major, major rehabs, additions, full guts, it takes me too long and too much money to make as much profit as the more moderate to light flips. No, it sounds like you've got it worked out. You know, every everybody who comes on the show who's got got a different take on real estate and, and how what their you know what their kind of niche is, I ask them this question: How do you source uh, the transact? How do you source the deals that you choose to do? And and I'll tell you why I ask it because that's our primary uh, business. We have a product called Data to Door Data to Doorstep dot com, and it um it helps everybody in this business, whether they're new or seasoned like you, uh, purchase or you know organize and then send out offers through the direct through direct mail using uh, assessor's data to uh, try to get the you know essentially we buy properties for half price so how do you look how do you source the deals that you know meet your acquisition criteria um, I am kind of contrary to most people right now I get 90 percent of my deals from the MLS still so it helps tremendously being an agent um, I do some direct marketing. I buy at auction some as well, but most of my deals are MLS, uh, acting fast, really just scoping my area on a daily basis over and over again is how I get most of my deals. That's awesome. I, if you have a crystal ball, I'd like to share it with you because <laughs> I, you know, everybody's got like little parts of talent all throughout this industry and mine's always been sourcing the deals through direct mail and some other stuff too. But I've, I've always heard of people like you you know, sourcing properties out of the MLS and picking and choosing the right ones. It's great. Yeah. And it's, it takes some time and effort, but, um, if, yeah, if you know your, I mean, the number one thing you can do is know your market. If you know your market and knowing what a good deal is, you know, that's half the battle right there. Right. So, I mean, what, from a dollar standpoint, just dollars, if you're comfortable uh, talking about it, what do you, what do you typically net on a flip? My average has been about 33,000 profit on each wow. flip I do. That's great. Yeah. And, um, you know, there, there are probably some extra costs in there for my team and staff that aren't directly, you know, attributed in there. They're paid through my real estate team, but you know, from the buy, sell, repair, financing, all of that, it's about $33,000. That's great. We, uh, we've got a little bit of a different model. We send a ton of offers out and uh, field it that way. And we mark it up exactly $10,000 and we totally disclose that. And then we've got a, a bunch of people that are, they're unrelated third parties, but we all on a first name basis, they, they do what you do. They, they take the transaction and then flip it. And, and I think without exception, make way more money than we do, but that's just not what we're good at. Well, you don't have to deal with the contractors or all of the rest of it. So I, I, I don't think that's a bad business model. And I have bought, um, I bought my first house from a wholesaler this year, actually, which um, we're finishing up right now. So I, I you know, if, if I had somebody who just fed me deals, that would be awesome. That's what we do. So that's, <laughs> that's good. Um, I have a, I have a question. Okay, so you've done, so you do MLS and now wholesaler. I mean, are you considering at some point, you know, um, getting deals before they hit the MLS, Um, you know, know? like a a listing agent. Yes. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I have, well, you know, as an R, I have to be careful because as an REO agent and a real estate agent, you know, you have to disclose and do a lot of different work if you're not buying off the MLS. And one thing I get asked a lot is, well, since you're listing for HUD and you're listing for these banks, can't you just cherry pick those houses? And the answer is no, under no circumstances can I buy those. It's a complete conflict of interest. So, um, but I have done off-market campaigns. 
um, absentee owner inherited list. And we stopped doing it so much just because, I mean, you really have to focus on it. You have to be a hundred percent to do that. And we weren't focusing 100% on it. We're kind of halfway doing it and things weren't getting done right. And it costs a lot of money to run those campaigns. So for now we're focusing on the MLS and it's been working out. Okay. I just, I think I don't want to get too scatterbrained. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I, you, you just answered my next two questions, you know, we're, cause we sit here in an office all day, uh, running data streams just to find out which, you know, what, what the best bang for our buck is in uh, wholesaling land and, uh, houses. We've been doing it since the nineties. So I totally agree. I mean, you, there's only 20, you know, 24 hours a day. You have to, you've got to figure out what you're going to be good at and spend that, those eight to 10 hours on that. And that's it. Yep. Completely agree. Or, you know, if you're golfing four hours depends. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next? You need to keep flipping houses. What do you, where do you think this market's going to go in the next, I don't know, 12, 24 months? Um, I'm in Colorado and our market is insane. So we've had one of the highest appreciating markets in the country the last two years. Um, Here, I think we're going to slow down. I don't, I cannot see it increasing 15 or 20% a year like it has been simply because there's a lot of land around here and they're building more and more. And I think they can meet the supply by building without having prices shoot up like they have been. Now, other areas of the country, I don't, you know, I'm not as familiar with them. I think a lot of it has to do with the national economy, how that does, the election. And those are things that are way above my pay grade. I don't know how to answer those questions. Um, I, I don't see a huge crash like we had before, but I could definitely see things slowing down in the near future. That's a pretty good assessment. Do you, uh, how many MLSs are in, the, in Colorado? Um, there are three or four. So it's not, I've heard of some states where they have like a MLS for every single county. Yeah. Um, ours in my primary area, there's basically one MLS, which makes it easy. Yeah. And then Denver kind of has its own MLS, but our MLSs work together. So you can see information from both MLSs on your MLS. So that's really nice. That's great. You know, I had a chance for, for a while to have access to, uh, uh, it was all above board to the, uh, MLS here in Phoenix and, and man, it's if you get in there and really, you can run some pretty cool records and, and data and find out what's the cheapest per square foot and the whole thing pretty quickly. It's 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 a really useful tool. Right, and and I'm in an area that has about oh, well, there's probably 200,000 people in my county, and we have the lowest inventory we ever had. So it's not tough for me to to look at what's for sale, you know, every day because there's just not that much. <laughs> so that makes right. it nice too. Like, what's your ballpark days on market? Oh, probably. And if you looked at the average, it's probably 30 days. Average. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's in, it's crazy. Most houses that are priced decent are under contract the first two days. Wow. I mean, that's a flippers, uh, you know, it, it almost pays in a market like that to take your time flipping. Cause it's, you're going to get that much more at the end. Right. And it's been kind of a, I call it enforcing negative habits sometimes because I have some properties that have taken a year to flip just cause I, had contractor problems and other issues and it's made me more money because our market's gone so crazy. But at the same time, if you take too long to flip and the market turns, that's, you know, how you get into big trouble. Right. Have you, uh, have you ever pre-sold something before you're done? Um, I, you know, I have actually sold a few of mine sort of as wholesale deals where what we'll do is once I buy a property, I'll stick a for sale by owner sign up in the yard and if someone comes along before we start working on it and they want to buy it, you know, make me 10 or 20,000, um, I'll sell it to them. And I've done that a couple of times, but I try, I don't like pre-selling them because I want the market to kind of give me the price it's worth. And in a market like this, I can usually get more, I think, if I list it than if I sell it before it's on the market. I kind of, I don't mind people competing against each other for that house. I personally love the get some cash and get out. <laughs> I kind of like that. That's that's brilliant, though. Put the sign up and then just see what happens. You can take the offer or not take the offer. So right. that, that's cool. I think that's brilliant. You know, we can uh, feed you some deals and run some numbers uh, in that county if you like. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, um, is- yeah. well, one more thing that I'm um, putting that sign up does, too, since I have a real estate team it gives my agents a ton of buyer leads because buyers are calling on those all the time. 
and I just send that number to my buyer's agents. It doesn't go to me. So they've kind of got people lined up to buy those houses before they're listed, or they can try and sell them another house, you know, if uh, those don't work. We do the same thing. We, you know, we, we purchase vacant raw land uh, for cash by using this mailer method, the data to doorstep method. And, you know, we, almost all of our properties sold before we buy it because we post it pretty quickly and we get probably eight to 10, maybe 20 leads per property. So the longer we leave it up, we, we leave it up as long as we can get away with. <laughs> nice. Mark, is there a woman in your life that makes sure that you don't paint these houses purple and gray and stuff? Um, there's a couple. So my wife <laughs> used to, that sounds bad. That's not how it no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple. I love it. <laughs> and um, one is my wife. Right. Yeah. Paint yourself in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my wife used to do most of the management of the flips, the contractors, but then we had twins a few years ago. So now she pretty much doesn't do too much of that, but I do have, um, two people on my team, Nikki and John who help manage the contractors, help decide what colors to do, um, keep on track of them because the most difficult job is getting contractors to make repairs quickly, um, be affordable and keep doing good work. So that's that's always probably the biggest struggle I've had and why I, I envy you guys selling them so fast and not dealing with that. <laughs> you know, for somebody, um, we, we uh, help a lot of really new people in this business. And one of the things that they come in with all the time, I see it all the time, is in their head is they just think there's like this silver bullet utopian type situation. And it's never like that. If you're in a market like you're in where, the, you know, there's there's rapid increases in values, there's always a downside, like not finding contractors and all kinds of other stuff. So you just have to – what I try to say is you have to come in with the right attitude. You know, you have to just deal with the problems as they come or not problems, but just deal with the situations as they come to get it done. Right. I like to call them challenges and think of it as just, you know – Life wouldn't be much fun if we didn't have challenges and things we had to overcome. And you're right. In an up market like this, they're building new houses. People have had huge increases in value so they can refinance their house and take cash out and finish a basement or make repairs. Contractors are really hard to find, and the really good ones are just charging a ton of money because they can. Yeah, exactly. So I've always wondered, I've never asked anybody this. So you're a HUD agent, a registered HUD agent. How does that go? I mean, are, do you see a lot of properties that come up in your area that you're like, man, I would just love to buy this, but I can't? Um, once in a while I do. But um, I mean, right now in Colorado, there's very few HUD homes, very few foreclosures at all because our market's so strong. But, um, you know, that does happen where once in a while, like, oh, man, that's a great house. I wish I could you know, buy that one. But at the same time, I'm making more money on the commissions, on volume, and giving leads to my agents by being a HUD agent than I would by you know picking up that deal here and there. Oh, okay. And with HUD, it's nobody in my office, no agents, none of my family members, or any of my agents' family members can purchase a HUD home. Right. So yeah. they are very strict about that. Right. Uh, are, are you you're a broker? I'm assuming. I am, but I'm actually not the office broker. So I have my own okay. team within the office. Um, I don't really want to be managing yeah. 40 different agents. I like <laughs> just managing my team. <laughs> Does HUD license brokerages or the individual agents? Um, well, the way HUD works is your broker is the registered listing agent with HUD. So just your managing broker. Okay. And he can designate an agent or broker within the office to be the main point of contact. So technically, um, you know, our broker is a person registered with HUD, but I'm the main point of contact with them. I mean, would you recommend it to other agents? Is it a good, pretty good racket? It is an awesome gig if you can get it, okay. but it's, it's not something that comes easy. It takes a lot of experience. Um, the proposal you have to submit that I, they actually are redoing some of the states for asset managers who handle HUD and they hire the agents. Um, the proposal I just submitted was about 60 pages long to get approved again. Um, so it is not something that's easy. But yeah, I mean, it is. it takes work, but it is a great gig if you can get into it. I have a good buddy who's a government contractor, and uh, he's famous for saying, you know, 
everybody complains about a $900 toilet seat, but he's like, if you want to come over to my office, I'll show you exactly why it costs 900. The government pays $900 for a toilet seat and it's paperwork and discussions and the whole thing. Yeah. And I see some of the things they will bid out, you know, the property preservation companies who do the work on HUD homes, they pay them almost nothing. I mean, it is crazy how cheap they pay those guys. They probably make $10 an hour to average it out. But they get a ton of volume and, um, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, no, they, I, I don't see that on my end with HUD. And I'm sure I know it's out there with other government agencies, but um, they are pretty fiscal with the, the HUD homes and the way they, they work those. What's it like to have twins? It's awesome. I know people always say, you know, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't, you know, I couldn't imagine it. How much work is it? But my wife and I always say. It's, it might be easier than having two kids at different ages because when they're twins, they're always doing the same thing. They're at the same stage in life. So you're not having to do two different things with each kid all the time. So, um, you know, we didn't know any different. We don't have any other kids. So to us, it wasn't too difficult and we, we really liked it. But, um, you know, I know some other people don't have, haven't had as good a luck as us, but I, I like it. I think it's really cool. I got to ask, is it, are they the same gender? What, what are you, girls, nope, boys? They're boy girl, which worked oh. out perfect for oh. us. Ah, <laughs> that's kind of good. So you're done, right? Now yep. you've got one of each. That's it. Quick, right. <laughs> quick while we're ahead. <laughs> that's cool. That's good. Did you name them something cute like Jack and Jill? <laughs> no, they are Brecken and Kaya. Oh, so, very yep. cool. That's awesome. <laughs> How old are they now? They are almost five. June 1st, they'll be five. Do they? Have, did you give them hammers yet and stuff? Not yet, but the other day, um, Brecken was talking about flipping houses and how he's not sure how you can flip a house upside down and still live in it. So I thought that was pretty cute. It's a great, you know, there's a bunch <laughs> of pictures on the internet of, of people that have built houses upside down. You should show them. <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> Actually, I'll Skype one to you when we're done here. <laughs> I wrote a blog about flipping houses. It did really well just because of that silly picture. Nice. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen that yet. <laughs> hey, so do you nickname all your flips like silly stuff like like uh, radioactive house and uh, ultra mold house and barking dog house like we did? Um, I don't. There are some houses I call names that I can't repeat on the air, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cute. It's frustration. <laughs> um, on my rental properties, my wife names them all animal names. So we have like Alpaca Way and Llama Lane and uh, Badger Boulevard. So she did name all those cool names. I love it. What's <laughs> What's been the funniest that, that you walked in and just went, you've got to be kidding me, you know, that you've seen before you did a renovation. What's like, what's some crazy stories? Um, you know, I've had crazier stories on houses that I didn't buy, but probably the craziest one was I did a BPO, which is a broker price opinion, um, for a bank on a short sale. And it took me forever to set up the appointment. I had to go inside. I go to the house and I could smell pet odor probably from the street, you know, before I get to the house and I get in there and there were literally like 20 dogs in the house running around and they did not clean up at all after that. Oh no. It's not really a funny story, but more of a sad story. But so after I was done there, I'm like, oh my, I called animal control and like, yeah, we know that house. It's just, we couldn't get a a warrant because there's not enough information. So I sent them pictures and they did a warrant and they found like 75 animals in that house and it was like a thousand square foot ranch wow basement and like 20 dead animals and it was crazy but um they had taken a dog from the neighbor had lost their dog and these people just took it and kept it for six months so oh the neighbor got their dog back so that was a good part of that story oh, that was nice there's a little happy <laughs> yeah. ending there right oh that's but, crazy yeah, so I didn't buy that one, but <laughs> I saw it. It was on the market for a long time before that house sold. That that was a mess. <laughs> Jill and I were uh, just in Los Angeles, and we did the Warner Brothers tour, like the back studio tour, of, you know, the expensive one. But they would go, they take you all through the studio. And there's a show called Two Broke Girls. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we yep. went, we went on the set of that thing. And so one of the characters in this story is a, it's a horse. You know, they live in a tiny little apartment in Manhattan, but there's a horse in the backyard. Dude, that horse lives in the studio. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, That's a natural just, environment, right? <laughs> I don't I don't know how they get away with that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of organizations that, that their whole life is all about making sure stuff like that doesn't happen. And they're on like once a week national TV. 
That is crazy. And the, and the tour guide said, you know, yeah, we've, we've been through a bunch of horses because horses aren't supposed to live in a TV studio. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jules kicked, oh, she just kicked my chins twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was great speaking with you, Mark Ferguson. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, yeah, I think you mentioned it. Investformore.com is my blog. Um, that's the number four spelled out, F-O-U-R. I've written something like 400 articles that are on there. I do my own podcast as well. I've got some YouTube videos. So I like to talk about my investing, being a real estate agent, um, all types of different things on there. And that's, that's the best way to find me. Great. It's great speaking with you, Mark. Have, hey, thank uh, you so much. Glad to be on the show. Thank and, you, Mark. And have a great rest of the year, man. All right. You too. Oh my goodness. I just remembered I should have asked him about smoking weed there. And <laughs> if he had, if he walked in any, any like crazy weed house in Colorado. Oh, Jill. <laughs> well, you know what I was thinking? Because I'm like, guy, what a nice guy. He's just, you know, just so Colorado and laid back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had twins, I might be doing doing that oh, a lot to hilarious. calm myself down. <laughs> <laughs> no, he seemed like a really good guy. He's got his niche all worked out. He's really young. Yeah, that, that was really cool. He's got it figured out. He grew up in it and got a good degree. And uh, it's it's awesome. You know, he. Uh, we should have talked about it on the air, but he's got. You know, when you have a when you get, get listings from the federal government through HUD and stuff like that, it's a lot of work, but you know you're paid. You know you're getting paid. Mm. So you got the paycheck piece covered, and then he's doing these flips on the side, probably banking it all. Doesn't spend any of it on overhead or anything because the other stuff pays for it. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of what we do. The bread and butter is our land. It always has been. It's our paycheck. That's true. And then we uh, she's knocking on the park on some of this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, these. Uh, SFR flip or wholesales and stuff. So it's like gravy. Yeah. I like that. So yeah, he was really good. That was really, I'm glad we talked to him. I'm curious, um, about his more about his business. I'm going to have to go. I, you know, when I was thinking too, I, I am, you know, hitting my head that I'm like, I, 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 I question the, why wait till it gets to the MLS? You know, he did say it's a lot of work. And he has to watch it every day. At least, I mean, he knows his business. He knows what he's doing. But I'd rather just let them call me. You know, and, and I, that's a great point because he did. He addressed it. He said, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, we've done that before and it's a lot of work. And it is a lot of work. But mm-hmm. if he took the the uh, the HUD and the the flip, the flick, fix and flip piece out of his business he, like we do, it's not a lot of work at all. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and then that, that further backs up, let's just say why we do what we do and he does what he does yeah. and he just said i just got one from an, from a wholesaler bingo right. so what he does i don't really want to do and what we do he's not really set up to do so we can all work really well together you know i'm impressed that you uh, actually mentally showed up for that at all because i thought you were just sort of sitting there going thinking about just like like dreaming like daydreaming like you're in middle school no i love i love colorado I, do too, I love everything about Colorado. I love the people in Colorado. I have friends in Colorado, and I think Colorado is awesome. I was just thinking, uh, Joe, while he was talking, that we've been to Utah multiple times in the last year, mm-hmm. and multiple types of, uh, you know, little vacations. We're killing it in California. Mm-hmm. Clearly, have Arizona covered. Um, I haven't been to New Mexico in a while, but I know the state really well because I used to go to tax deed auctions all the time. But I have not spent enough time. Mm-hmm. In Colorado. Yeah. And it's just as far. It's probably or just as close. Maybe closer mm-hmm. than a lot of these places. Oh, in Nevada, too. We've been all through Nevada. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I gotta go. We need to go back and spend some time there. Especially in the summer. I actually like Colorado almost better in the summer. It's it's so pretty. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Yeah, we used to have a... No, I won't get into it. But I had no, a, com- tell us. a commercial... I had a piece of commercial real estate in Greeley for quite some time. A long-term care facility. It did really well. Because this is better. Let's go buy some property. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480 467 0359. 
You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. LandAcademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.